Hey, Andres, what's up? What's up, Coach Christo? I'm having a... <laughs> yeah, that looks like a big, a big sandwich. A fat turkey BLT with avocado and a cold pasta salad. Nice. <laughs> um, how are you after last night? Dude, I think I have um, something wrong with my foot. I think somebody said it could be um, turf toe. Hmm? Turf toe, turf toe, turf. I don't know. It sounds nastier than it is. It's pain. <laughs> it's not. It's not an infection. Um, but like every time I step, like it hurts. So, do you prefer playing was- on uh, on grass? Or turf. So let, let's be, because obviously I don't think I've ever heard anyone who prefers playing on turf if the grass is really nice, but would you take a field like we played on last night over uh, a tur- the turf field in Tingsboro or the other way around? Me as a player or me as a coach? Uh, either, both. As a player, it depends if, if it's pickup, I'll take yesterday's. Um, if it's, if it's a field with that, my team has trained in, or that's our home training, I'll take that over turf. Um, but as a coach, I think it's more difficult for me to coach the players in that, but, um, I guess it depends if I, yeah, if I have players like the old sixes, I don't mind them. We might actually have an advantage because they are so good. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I I talk about this sometimes. I hate turf so much. Um, probably cause I never played on it when I was growing up. Um, but even, so I have this field out in front of my house. That's even a little bumpier, bumpier than the one we played on last night. Um, I'll take that in a heartbeat over, over turf. Um, yeah, dude, like, like if you look at Messi's videos when he was training, now when he was in Argentina, <laughs> I don't even think there was grass. Even, even some videos I've seen of him playing for Barcelona when he was like, um, 12 or 13 or something, they were playing like, it was like dirt almost like it, it was, it wasn't turf and it wasn't good grass. That's for sure. Um, no. I think, I think a lot of players, and sometimes when I post video, I post a video where I talked about how like the, the, um, uh, that I, that I prefer, um, grass and that I have this, like, Oh, I had this beautiful grass field out in front of my house and I showed like a video of it. Um, and someone was like, that's not a beautiful field. And it's like, you know, I played on a first division uh, academy in, in Greece and the fields we played on a lot of the time were not nice. Um, and I, I don't know. I think like people have this um, like misconception about like, oh, you need a perfect grass field to train on. You know, all winter I was training in, the, in my barn in on the like on the cement floor. Um, and mm-hmm. I had quality training sessions. Like, you know, it's just. Dude, there was, there was this kid at BU, Dominic Badgy. He plays for Cincinnati now. Bro, and I might have shared this before. Every time we did a passing pattern, I don't understand. The ball was just like, every time he, he passed the ball, it was perfectly weighted. It was like, as if the grass was wet and it was turf. And it was bad turf, like that turf that just bounced. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yo, Dom, how? How do you do it? He's like, bro, you know, I used to play like in straight <laughs> uh, dirt and cement and all these things in, from Senegal. Um, so this is like perfect for me. It's too easy for me. I was like, okay, fair. So yeah. it's like, it actually makes you better. Yeah, I, th- I, I showed a video once of the, like the first, the field I fell in love with the game on. And it's like this atrocious field is like slanted like this you know <laughs> uh but I, I think i think a lot of the times we see like disadvantages like players will be like oh i don't want to train on grass i don't want to train on bumpy grass um or i, I don't want to train Oil. here or there or whatever i think that like the the most creative players that i've worked with or played with have always been players who had like who came from really tough situations, whatever it was, like maybe they were really small or, you know, they always played on really horrible fields or they only played pickup. They never played on a competitive team until they were like 13 or 14 or something. And I think like tough situations, like just like in life, like tough situations will kind of, if you overcome them, 
like they make you such a better player. Like you shouldn't be looking for the perfect field or the perfect teammates or the perfect, you know, whatever it is. Um, I think you should just it, it could, where you it actually are, creates figure it a competitive out. advantage. Yeah. All right. So yeah. let's let's um, wait. But I guess I guess depending on the shoes I have, I'm wearing. I would one, not. The one that. thing I would actually, I was going to say that too. Um, bring your cleats next time so I can wear mine too. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't, I should have just gone barefoot. <laughs> actually, I should have run and got you my, uh, I think I had a second pair in my, uh, in my car. So I should have just gotten you those. Um, Man. anyway, we'll move into the topic for today. Uh, what are we talking about today? We're I don't talking. Know we're about. <laughs> well, I'll go. I'll go first then. We're I'm talking the about a time uh, when we clashed with a teammate or a coach, or could be oh. just someone else in in sports. Um, so I'll go first. Um, my story is about a coach, um, and it's actually one of the coaches that I. Well, I, I, I won't. I'll get to that later. All right. So. Um, I was in a training session and one of those sessions, uh, kind of, kind of like you had last night where every first touch is off, every pass is off. <laughs> no, um, no, but it was, it was one of the, it was one of those sessions where nothing was working, nothing. Um, and I'm sure like if, if I had like, you know, been zoomed out, like watching myself play, like every play was just atrocious. Um, Every touch was 10 yards away from me. None of my passes were finding feet or even the space that I wanted to put the ball into. Um, and my coach was being a jerk. So he was like, every time after like, you know, we were like probably like 10 or 15 minutes in and I was having a horrible session. And every time I got the ball, it was like, oh, here we go again. Or like, um, you know, I would, I would shoot and miss by like 10 yards or something and be like, great shot, Christo. Um, you know, nice wow. touch. Um, and this was a coach that I really respected. Um, I was like me coaching Luke. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was really, really tough. Um, and, um, I, I got the, uh, you know, I, I, I got the ball and somehow I, I managed to like take a, oh, like a, somewhat decent first touch. Um, and I was like, you know, trying to dribble past someone. And I don't know what I did. Like one, one of those times when you can't like figure out where your feet are going and you just kind of like trip over the ball. I like kicked it kind of like to the side. I think it went out for a throw in or something. And, and, uh, and the coach walked right up to me and got right in my face. Oh, <laughs> and he was like, what's wrong with you, Christo? You even want to be a soccer player or football player. This was in Greek as well. Um, all, it seems like all my stories are in Greek. Um, and something in me just snapped. And I was like, I was pissed. I had been building up the whole time. Um, and I'm pretty good usually about keeping my emotions in check. But, you know, I was like 14 or 15, probably 15 maybe, um, I think. And... Uh, and he had been just goading me the whole training session. You know, we were probably like an hour in at this point, uh, already into the scrimmage. Um, and something in me just broke. And so I got right in his face back at him. And I said, uh, yes, I fucking do right in his face. Wow. And, uh, and immediately after I said it, I was like, Oh, What's going to happen now? And he smiled. He turned, walked away, and we just carried on with the session. And the very next time I got the ball, it was um, I was playing um, left wing, and uh, I, I got the ball uh, from one of my center mids, I think. Um, and my first touch, I took it inside with the inside of my foot, spun the right back, um, and finished right into the top corner. Um, it was one of the best first touches. I still remember exactly how it happened. One of the best first touches I've taken. Obviously, it was in a training session, but um, really clean hit as well, right uh, into the top corner. Um, and that coach, to this day, 
which is the best coach I ever played for. Um, and I didn't even play for him for very long because um, he wasn't coaching at a very good team. And I moved on to a, he he got me a trial with a much better team, probably just, you know, weeks, uh, maybe tops a month after after this. Um, and I probably only played with him for like three months or something. Uh, but, you know, we, we talked afterwards a lot and he knew exactly what he was doing. Oh. Um and he wasn't, he wasn't a guy like, I don't know. Um, you know, he was, he was quite an old coach. He was probably sixties, probably maybe. Yeah. Sixties when I was, when I was playing for him. Um, and still alive? yeah, I think so. Um, I think so. Uh, he was last time I checked. Um, I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I've talked, I've talked on the phone to him, um, a couple of times. Um, but yeah, the, I don't know if he would have, uh, you know, passed many coaching courses um, because a lot of the things he said, you know, he, w- he wasn't afraid of swearing. He wasn't afraid of, you know, uh, talking really harshly to players um, at times. Um, but something about like just his honesty, maybe. Um, and then he knew at least like, Different coaches, I think, are good at different things. For me, he was exactly what I needed at that exact point in time. Um, and he knew exactly what to do to get the best out of me. And I think, you know, we'll open this up and we'll, we'll talk back and forth a little bit now. But um, I think w- one of the things that a lot of people maybe don't understand, like, so much. Have you seen that? Uh, have you seen Miracle? The movie, the hockey. Oh my goodness! All right, so there's there's this scene. I'll I'll put it in. I'll put it in the podcast um, where the the player is injured, um, but uh, the coach talks to the doctor. He's like, he's not going to injure it worse, but he won't be able to really do much. Um, and the coach is like, goes into the locker room, and the guy's like taking off his pads, and he's like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Doc said I'm done," and he's like, "Okay, so you're a quitter or something." And he just like pisses him off so much. And then, you know, he goes and he plays Um, as the coach was walking out of the locker room. He's like to the assistant coach that ought to get him going. Right. Um, And it was just like, sometimes as a coach, it's good to be nice. It's good to be understanding. It's good to be supportive. Sometimes your players just need a kick in the ass. This is unbelievable. You guys are playing like this is some throwaway game up in Rochester. Who are we playing, Rammer? Sweden. Yeah, you're damn right, Sweden! In the Olympics! What the hell's wrong with you? Put your gear on. I said put your gear on! The doc told me I can't play. Yeah, yeah, I know. You got a bad bruise. You know what? Put your street clothes on, because I got no time for quitters. Come on, Herb. Nobody's quitting here. You worry about your own game. Plenty there to keep you busy. Bruise on the leg is a hell of a long way from the heart, you candy ass. What'd you call me? You heard me. You want me to play, huh? Is that what you want? I want you to be a hockey player! I am a hockey player! You want me to play on one leg? Huh? I'll play on one leg! That'll get him going. Get off me. Oh yeah. Will that make you happy? I'll, I'll clean up. Oh, easy, I am easy. a hockey player. Uh, sometimes your players just need you just need to like snap your fingers so they can wake up. Um, and sometimes anger can be a powerful. Uh, you know, making someone angry can be a powerful tool. Um, and it got it has to be used at the right time in the right circumstances. Uh, but I do think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Well, I mean, I, I had a question, but now I have a comment. But so, yeah, no, I agree with, with anger being, a, I think anger is an expression of love. Um, and if you're able yeah. to. Uh, it was my love for the game that was making me, I, I was so mad, but that kind of made me like realize like, yeah. I care about this. I'm going to go like, I'm going to yeah. show, he asked me if I want to be a soccer player. I'm going to show him that I do. Yeah. And so I think as coaches, 
being fixated on that, that every single expression that they make or every emotion comes from the foundation of love. And even when you hate, it's because you love something else that you're hating that thing, you know? And so all, all as humans, everything that we express is love. We just have different ways to do it. And if we disagree, then for me, it's love. For you, it's hate. For me, it's happiness. For you, it's sadness. Um, so I think for us, it's being able to not take it personal and know that I can actually play with all these emotions to try to bring out. Because some players play the best when they're angry and some players play the best when they're happy. And how can I find that balance? So I think it was a, it's a really good um, example from, from your coach. My question was going to be, had you not scored upper 90, would it have been the same story? Uh, I mean, no, but I think the, the more important thing was like, I think sometimes you have to, I talk about this a lot with like playing with confidence. I tell players like, you know, I'll ask you, if you knew you could succeed, what would you do in your next game? Go try. If you want to dribble, try to dribble past five players, try it. Just see. Um, because I think sometimes you need to go past your breaking point for, to like kind of explore who you are. And I think, um, and that can be like by doing something you wouldn't usually do, like going outside of your comfort zone, you know, you'd be asking a girl out on a date. It could be, you know, stepping up to take a penalty. It could be taking on a defender in a one V one. Um, or it could be you know, pushing your player to the point where they're, they're, they're snapping, like, and they get like into that, they like channel that anger because I had been mad at coaches before, but kind of like in a controlled way, like keep it to myself. I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to shout. And I think he wanted to see who I was when I, when he pushed me past my breaking point. Um, and, and what that would kind of do to me. And I think he also wanted yeah. you to see that. Yeah. D- yeah, exactly. Um, and I think like, you know, it, it's so, it just so happened, like, you know, it's a good story because, you know, I did, uh, you know, do, uh, you know, get score a great goal right afterwards. But regardless of that, I tell the story anyway, because, yeah. you know, just that kind of change in me where it was like, you know what, I've always hated coaches yelling at me. I've always hated it when people were telling me this or telling me that, like that I was a bad player, that I was playing badly. Um, You know, after a bad game, I wouldn't want to like um, get feedback from a coach because I didn't like to hear like, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. That was really tough for me. Um, But then, you know, being pushed past the point where I couldn't like control it. And I was just like listening, like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever I did this wrong. Yeah. Okay. Um, where I was like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm sick of this. Um, being pushed back to, past that breaking point after that, I'm not saying I never had struggles with this ever again, but kind of made me realize like, you know, those negative things people are saying, you can take it as the negatives, or you can kind of take it like we were talking about, like negatives can be positives. If you look at them the right way, can you take that negativity and channel it into anger that helps you play better or channel it into like, that makes you feel angry. That means you care about how you perform. Can you use that to play better? Um, and I think, have you, did you hear, um, Michael Jordan's, um, when he got, uh, put in the in the Hall of Fame. Did you hear his like uh, his speech? I've heard a lot of the things he said. Uh, so you yeah. start. It was like you know. I just want to thank this guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to thank this yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah. I want to thank this guy who benched me. I want to thank this guy who didn't believe in me. I want to thank the high school coach who cut me from the JV team or whatever. Um, and for Michael Jordan, like his whole thing was kind of like. We talk a lot about like, don't compare yourself to other people. I think like in life in general, and I think that is good, but at the same time, sometimes, you know, Michael Jordan obviously was comparing himself to other people, his whole career. And it did, uh, it worked for him. He looked for for the right triggers. Yeah. Um, Have you seen the last dance? 
Uh, I haven't watched the whole thing. I've seen clips, but I do need to sit down and watch that. It's probably better than Miracle, but <laughs> um, I'm sure I'm sure it is Miracle. <laughs> but uh, you should still watch Miracle. It is a good movie. I will. I will. But no, yeah, he, he goes over and over so many times. Like he just picked little things. Like somebody didn't say hi to him, and now yeah, he was gonna use that to demolish somebody else. Which again, I don't know if that's healthy or not. Um, I choose to believe not. I choose to believe if you don't, if you're not, that can be dangerous if you don't know yourself well. Um, and it, be, it can become addicting and it can become harmful. Um, as he was unbelievable, but I, I have to, I, at least from watching the, the documentary, I have to choose to believe that without Pippen and without Phil Jackson and without Dennis, I don't know that he is the Michael Jordan because he ha- he didn't have Phil the first seven years and he was still unbelievable. But I think, I guess in a world where results matters, six for six, I think has a lot to do with with the environment that, that Phil and the people around him. Um, so even if he still played those games, I don't know if he would be Jordan. He still probably would be in the Hall of Fame. And this is, and the other thing is like, I think like, Michael Jordan was probably, I mean, definitely a very hard teammate to have. Yeah. And a team yeah. of Michael Jordans would probably be an absolute disaster, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but like in the right yes. environment, you know, that kind of player, if he's supported by the right people around him, probably the right coach as well to channel yeah. that. I just yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I, I don't think that making a player feel you know, like crap at a training session um, to make them angry, to make them play better always works. And I don't think it's always a good um, strategy. I think most of the time it's a bad strategy, Uh, but I think that every player needs to be pushed to somewhere they're not comfortable in a variety of ways, whether that's, you know, making them, uh, you know, do something that they're scared to do, um, you know, making yeah. them. Yeah. I, I just think like well, yeah. pushing your limits I think, is important. I think, yeah. And I think we want to, we want to find like the equation that like, this is the one that's going to work for every player. I don't think that's realistic, but to a certain degree, one thing that has worked best for me is before I try out all the different approaches, whether it's to make them feel confident or to make them feel angry or to make them feel frustrated. Um, I try to, I try to show them how good they already are. Um, for example, yesterday, um, when we were in, in the scrimmage, um, Luke was trying to tell you, Oh, you're doing this. You're, you keep going to the right and you're not doing this. And like, Luke, you're play a player trying to coach you. Um, and that's fine. Like I'm, I'm so for, um, guiding each other on the fields um but with his 06 team it's become a little bit unhealthy where they just um it's more of telling the telling each other what to do because i know i know and you don't um as opposed to like i'm trying to help you solve a situation better and he didn't like it like he was like oh wait so you don't want me to coach my you don't want you don't want me to coach my teammates you don't i was like no i I think we we have to take a few steps back then after after the session um, I texted him and I said, hey, Luke, what, what does Coach Crystal do well as a soccer player? And then um, first he said nothing, <laughs> but he was joking. <laughs> but, um, but then he said, no, he, he's a really good dribbler. And then he does a really good job of working hard as soon as they lose the ball. His team loses the ball. Um, and then I asked him, well, how many times did you tell him that? And then he said, zero. And then... Um, I had a player in my team. Uh, I couldn't say his name. Um, I think it's Streehouse, but I was saying Treehouse. <laughs> um, but um, but the, he he wasn't probably the the most ta- talented. But I think he left that he left last night thinking that wow, I had an amazing scrimmage because he was shutting down Luke a couple of times. He kept winning the ball. Um, and so and so I think before you you push the buttons, I think you have to. Uh, almost mind the field with, with love and, and um, confidence 
so that then they listen to you. And so I, I told Luke, I was like, I think love is, is underrated, but it's still, it's also undefeated. Um, and so I think you start with that, even in the moments that you know that you're right, that he should have done this, because when you criticize or when you push the boundaries, um, they're going to know how to take it. So I think if you do it with someone that, that you don't know, it's going to yeah. explode and it's going to be yeah. very unhealthy. So I, I think, um, starting in that way helps me. Yeah, I think I definitely like, you know, I said, I respect this coach a lot, even though I didn't play for him for very long, we spent a lot of time together. Like I was training with him every single day. I saw him six days a week, um, for, you know, uh, and we, you know, we actually drove together to the, to the session. So we had like, you know, 30 minutes in the car there, you know, two hour session, 30 minutes in the car back. We were there, we were together for like, you know, 18 hours a week, probably at least. Yeah. Um, and you know, we had a really close relationship, which is why it was like almost like difficult for me to deal with, you know, him kind of saying negative yeah. things to me, but like also more powerful. Like if it had been a coach, I didn't really care about, like, it would have been like, like I, I, yeah. I would have felt, I, I, I don't know. It just, it wouldn't been like, it wouldn't be the same story. Um, and I think it's, it's funny. Cause, um, you know, I, I, I talked to Luke last night, actually, after the, the thing trying to, um, you know, and, and I was kind of explaining like, you know, Luke, I know you can get the ball by yourself. Um, the and the players on the on the right side of the field, maybe see a lot less the ball. Um, you know, obviously, when when we're playing in sessions um, with our with our kids, um, it's different. Uh, you know, we're you, you said it when, when I asked you about it, like why you're playing, you're trying to show players something that you can't tell them sometimes. Um, and, and I see it kind of like the same way. Um, and I'll play in a certain way. Like, it's not like I'm playing, you know, for, for an actual team. Like I'm, I'm going to try to set other players up for uh, success that I think they need to do. So like, if I see, uh, you know, I'll play it to my center back when he's under a little bit of pressure to see how he deals with that. Right. Like I knew Luke can Luke will see a lot of the ball anyway, uh, but maybe the right winger won't. So I want to play to that side more. Uh, and he was like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and he apologized. And I was like, no, don't apologize. I'd rather have you say something so that yeah. I can explain why rather than just assume that whatever I'm saying is right. Just cause I'm the coach. Um, yeah. You know, I, I want players to be involved, not just in playing in the sessions, but understanding, um, you know, what, what's going yeah. on. Uh, cause I, I think that's, I think that's important. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I just, uh, it's, a you know, it's, a it's, it's an interesting conversation because, you know, obviously you have to be careful doing things like this. Um, yeah. but at the same time, I think like, uh, you need to, you need to push your players and find out what, what they're made of, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. no, that's, that's good. And I think there, no, knowing that like you, you gotta be okay with sometimes them not catching it. So like maybe, maybe in your story, you don't score that goal. And, you and then I go home and I just happen. feel like, she, yeah, I feel, yeah, well, feel you horrible. Go, still, you still go angry. And then coach still is playing that mind game. Um, and it's up to the coach. Like, do I stop it now or do I push it a little bit more? And I don't know that there's a right or wrong because eventually it's going to explode either way. Um, and it's going to be like, oh, this is why he was doing it. Um, yeah. So I, I think being okay with, with feelings and emotions um, and, I mean, if that, if that wasn't part of the game, the game would suck. Yeah. All right. Time to transition over into uh, Andres' story. I can't wait to hear this. My story. Okay. So uh, it was in high school, and um, I was having a really good season. It was like I played midfield. Everything I touched turned into a goal. Everything. There was, a, there was one game where, like, we knew the other team was really good. And so the plan was to play center back, go midfield, score, and then come back, center back, and then win the game. Um, and, and it worked. Um, and then there was another game where, like, the goalie, the goalie hit, uh, punts it, 
And then because, you know, when you feel that anything you, you do is going to happen because you're just so confident, I swung with my left foot like one time from the from the punt and the keeper had came out to punt and then it went over him with my left foot. Unbelievable. And so it was like, it was that season that like, I was just like anything, every pass is an assist, every, I could hit it with my head, with my shoulder, with my knee. And then we had, but there was the, the team that we were competing against, I think it was Madison Park, like, Competing against, I mean, throughout the season that they were really close to us. Um, they they also kept winning. And then we we're playing this fairly, I'd say difficult, but not the hardest game of the season. Um, and every single shot I kept missing. <laughs> and it wouldn't go in no matter what. Um, and uh, and from a whole season of like, of, of me putting the ball in the back of the net, they're just like, I mean, what else do you guys, they, were, they would be like, what do you want us to do? Like, you're the one who's supposed to score. And then um, and then when I would set somebody up, then they would also miss. And so it felt like there was nothing we, we could do to, to score the goal. Um, and then the coach got really mad. And the, <laughs> so in, in the first half, he's like, why are you guys missing? Why are you guys missing? And then, like, I missed, like, a stupid amount of, cra- of, of chances. And then the coach, uh, then I have, he goes, like, you have to score the goals. Like, you're the player of the team. You have to make sure you put that damn ball in the net. Um and then I was like, wait, wait, hold on, coach, hold on. Hold on. I was like, you know, like, I get it. And like, I'm having a really good season. But last game, I hit the thing with my left foot. And that went, like, I didn't even intend for that to be that the good of a shot. Um, just, just let it happen, you know. And like, maybe I won't score, but just let it happen. If, 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 if things have gone right, maybe there'll be one shot. It could be the last shot of the game. It could, or maybe it doesn't happen. But just, just don't put that pressure on me because I'm not going to enjoy the game. Um, I was junior, senior, so I had a good relationship with the coach and, and the players. So it wasn't like necessarily like an intense clash, but it was friction. Um, and I remember like the whole second half, same thing. It, it missed and missed and missed and missed. Um, but the second half, the coach wasn't wasn't uh, pushing as, as much as much. And then um, it was it was I think like three to four three or four minutes, and they played me the ball. Um, and then. Um, I knew that the keeper had had cut, had given one way, and then one I one touched it to the second post, um, and it went in, and then everybody went bananas, and it was like it was like nobody had missed a chance, the entire game. It was like we knew we were gonna win. It was like they knew that I, I was gonna score, um, but I don't know. I think it was it was this this pressure to, um, at some point, me trying to prove that everything I touch turns into a goal. Um, the coach not wanting to lose the season. The players, we maybe had gotten into a bad habit that we only have a player that's going to fix this for us. Um, and so in, in there's so many different things to bring out of that. But I think for me, it was more like I you can't really evaluate your confidence on your players or on yourself based on one game or even based on a season sometimes. Um, and... And I, I appreciate having a good relationship with that coach because it, it allowed me to say that to him and him say something to me in a not um, uh, not in a fighting or arguing manner, um, which I think that's the environment that, that we should look for. But um, but yeah, that was it. I think there was that tension I, I have where everybody is doing it because they everybody wants to win, and we there's one way that we've been winning and what's going. It's almost like you're missing on purpose. Yeah, type of thing, you know, um, and uh, and then and then for me it was like, it was like the the love of of the team and and between the players and between the coach and the players was sucked out because we won't put in the ball the yeah. ball in there. And how can we find a way to keep that love in there? Win, lose, miss, score, all all of those. So, um, so yeah. So I think again, it, it it's it's part of the game. The emotions, the clashes. Um, and it was with the coach, I guess, similar to, to you. Um, but I think it it brought a better version of all of us for the next time that things weren't going well and we weren't scoring. We're like, okay, we've been here before, you know. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the story. Yeah, one one nil win. One nil win. One nil win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The field was horrible, dude. <laughs> it was like it was. It's a field in Boston. Um, no, in in Roxbury, and it's like caged. And like the field smaller than an eleven v eleven field, but you still play eleven v eleven, and it's right next to the street. 
and like it's like you're playing in the middle of the hood type of thing um yeah i don't know it's it was but we won <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's interesting to me because a lot of um you know, I see a lot of like, you know, analysis of like uh, you know, uh football uh or soccer games um in in my space online and um like the uh it's it's like win or lose is like very black and white, like score or miss, you know, and all of these yeah. things um and I think uh, players lose themselves in that a lot. I found like, especially like when like I, I was a striker, right? And, and coaches. I, yeah, true. Um, and I, I remember, you know, I had this like incredible season one year and I was scoring every game, every game. Uh, I scored, you know, I was scoring m- multiple goals every game. Um, and the next year, all of a sudden it like, it just stopped. I wasn't scoring at all. Um, but I was playing better that second year. I honestly think that, um, I had, you know, I was setting people up every game. I had an assist or multiple assists. The team was playing better. Um, and I think, um, in the moment I felt like, you know, I need to score. I need to score. I need to score, but it's, it's not really like that, right? Like when you're like, we talk a lot about, you know, development, um, you know, for players and stuff, but I honestly believe like when a player is on the field in a game, the priority, like the, the goal is you're there to play, you're there to win. Um, you're there to have, you know, enjoy it as well. Um, and I think enjoyment is part of winning, but like a player on a field in a game, like, what do they want to do? They want to prevent goals. They want to create goals. They want to score goals. Uh, they want to help the team succeed. Um, you know, however that is. And sometimes, you know, the yeah. ball, the ball doesn't go in the net. Um, there's only, there's only so much you can do. And also like, I think we talked a little bit about momentum last week, uh, you know, with like Real Madrid and, and I mean, yeah. you could say Liverpool have momentum too. It just feels a little bit more magical kind of in, in Real Madrid's case. And like, you know, everything works out. And when everything works out, it's, it feels like it's impossible to stop, right? It's, it's snowballing. Um, yeah. you, can't, you, can't, you can't stop it. It just gets more and more and more powerful. And that's like, that's you uh, the whole season. And then all of a sudden when, uh, when that stops – it's uh, it can it can be really tough. I know, like it sounds like you handled it in a really mature way. Um, I probably would have would have gone to pieces. Um, you know, if I if I didn't uh, you know, if I hadn't scored um, uh, a goal in in a game that I expected to score or something. Um, yeah. and I I know you know that definitely did happen to me. Um, yeah. but yeah, I think like the and the expectation doesn't help sometimes. Uh, because no. like you could have been, like yeah. you said, you were missing a lot of chances, but I, one thing that's interesting to me at least, like when I evaluate players, like say I'm at a, at a tryout, like trying to pick, pick a player or two for attacking players. It's, I usually pick the players who make the most mistakes, not, not like stupid mistakes, but like if a striker is missing chance after chance, after chance, after chance, what that says to me, they're putting themselves in great positions to score. Right. Yeah. And yeah. the, I take that over the striker who's not getting chances. Um, yeah. So it's like, sometimes things just don't work out. Sometimes the ball just doesn't go in the net. It happens. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean your whole game was crap. A striker can have a great game and not score a goal. Um, it's just, you know, yeah, I think the, the metrics, yeah, the metrics, you know, in competitive environments or in sports are a bit corrupted and, and a, a bit unfair. Um, and I think it, it's up to, to your team, your coach, yourself to, to make sure you go into every situation with the right metrics. And a good question that you pose is, what is your reaction in the moment in which that magical, mo- that magical, essence is fades away um and that's a that's a true question for any athlete or anybody where things are going well really in everything that you do you're shining 
It's um, easy. <laughs> it's easy. And then, and then once it goes away, it, you don't know how to bring it back. And I think, I think the biggest part of that is you are not what you do. If you are what you do, then when what you do goes wrong, you evaluate who you are by what you do. Yeah. Um, but what you do can be a reflection of who you are. But it's not who you are. But you have to be able to differentiate those all the time because the moment that you lose track of those and your what you do or what you have or what you have or what people think of you or what your worst moments are or what your best moments are, you identify those as who you are, then you're in a in a dangerous uh pattern. Yeah. Um and, and, and so for me is continue to diversify what you do in the day. Um, and, and maybe it doesn't necessarily have to be, I don't mean like go play basketball. No, like you are not what you have. Okay. You have a really good finishing ability. Okay. But can I study tactics instead of going onto the field? Um, or can I watch a team that I don't lo- like how they play? So I learn a different perspective on the sport just so that you're not only focused on this. What I have is a good finishing. And so you're limiting yourself. And when that doesn't go well, you don't have other other ways to value yourself. So not only in soccer, but yeah, also don't let soccer be your only identity. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I think you being able to identify that you are not what you do. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I uh, yeah, I I, I love uh, that you're saying you're you're not um, you're not what you do. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of players, you know, fall into that trap of of thinking like, you know, I played a bad game. I'm a bad player. You know, I missed, um, I'm someone who misses or or something like, um, one strategy that I love to use with players is goal setting. But I find that when I say set, set goals for yourself, they always set the wrong goals. It's always (laughs) score in the next game. It's always, you know, it's every, without fail, every goal they set, is stuff that's outside of their control. And what's the point of that? Because if you can't control it, then you're just, what you're doing is you're writing something down, I'm going to score tomorrow. And then when you look at that tomorrow and you didn't score, you feel like crap, right? Set a goal. Like I, I set, and I I do, the goals that I set for myself are um, stuff that players look at me when I try to talk to them about this stuff. And they're like, what are you talking about? Because my goals are all about uh, the thoughts you have, the thought process we use and stuff. So it's like, you know, stuff like, um, uh, you know, I try to notice I, if I, you know, uh, I'll have like a goal for myself every day and it'll be like, notice when I'm feeling happy. That's it. Notice when I'm feeling stressed. More specific goals for players, though, it can be stuff like show up to training 15 minutes early, you know, yeah. work, work hard. Every time you lose the ball, run as fast as you can for five seconds to win it back. Stuff like yeah. this that you can control because the, the, the there's no point setting goals that you can't control. You can't yeah. ever write down like I, I think. um setting goals and like having, um, you know, we've talked about like imagining things. Like I think that like, uh, talking about, uh, something I do is I always tell my wife, uh, or my, uh, my daughter, like how many goals I'm going to score the next time I go play. Um, and it's not like I'm setting a goal. It's just like, it's like a little, a little joke, but it's also like, there's some like weight behind that a little bit, because I know whether I score or not, they don't care. But for me, if I do score, it's like I go back. I'm like, yeah, I did it. Um, And it feels good. Uh, But when I'm actually setting goals for myself, it's never stuff that I can't control. Uh, And it's, you know, same with whatever player I'm working with on, uh, you know, on dealing with this stuff. Because I think confidence comes from, you know, doing the stuff you can and accepting that, you know, the things that are outside my control it'll happen or it yeah. won't. It is what it is. You know, you could shoot a yeah. hundred times, yeah. hit the post a hundred times. And, you know, I'm not going to say like you failed. Uh, it just, you know, it didn't happen. Yeah, and when you're setting your goals is actually 
it could be a good reflection of of what of what is molding you. Um, I think you you're you're formed by the information around you, and um, and if your goal is to score goals, um, if one of your goals is to score a goal, um, are you doing it because is what the highlights on YouTube say that is the most meaningful thing? Yeah. Is it because of the inst Instagram or TikTok? That's all that's there, the, the best moments. Um, and then that will reveal to you like, oh, is this a goal that I actually have? Or is it a goal uh, influenced by something outside of me? Um, and so the ones that you can't control are definitely influenced by outside of you. But that's good to go through that process because then you're, you start to identify, oh, that's not me. That's something else making this goal. If I can control it, it's my actual goal. 15 minutes early to practice, that's an actual goal that reflects if you really want to be at practice or you're really looking forward to practice, that's an easy one and I can control it. So, um, yeah, I have a question so yeah, for you. Is, um, if I probably uh, have like, if go ahead. what? No, no, go ahead. Oh, um, if you, uh, you can choose, uh, score four goals or give five assists, what would you rather do? And why the why is very important. Score four goals or, or five assists. Yeah. Um, those are the only two options. Yeah. No other context. No other context. Uh, I always like to assist. All right. Um, so I said I, I would rather score goals, but I pick five assists um, because it means my team scored five goals, right? So that's yeah. that's why. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not gonna make a video on this, but um, you know, I think it's like uh, a lot of players. You know, they think about like you know. Maybe, you know, you missed a lot of shots that day. You helped your team win the game. And at the end of the day, that's, you know, you play like you succeeded. Um, and, yeah. and whether you have, even if you hadn't, uh, you know. No, that's true. Necessarily I necessarily mean, have changed how you why, why felt would about it. it why, but. Would any, why would any, why would anyone who likes soccer choose four over five? Yeah. You know? Because they don't really like, you know, soccer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they like what uh, soccer <laughs> reflects of the mix. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. I think it's time for uh, three key takeaways. I'll do. I'll do the first one. So I tell the first story, um, and it's going to be push past what you think your limits are. Get out of your comfort zone. Get angry. Get sad. Get happy play with confidence, take risks, um, but get outside of what's comfortable. If you want to be a good person, a good player, um, because that's how you'll find out who you are. Okay. That's good. Um, I'll just say every, every emotion is an expression of love. I think that helps because even when you're angry, you know that you're loving. Um, and when somebody gets angry on the field or maybe the coach gets angry, you, there's some sort of perspective that you can look at that, that it's an, it's an expression of love. And I think that opens the door for a conversation and empathy and uh, a closer team. So, yeah, every, every emotion on the field is actually an expression of love. Um, and I have a, I have a third one. Um, every difficulty in your life can probably be looked at as an opportunity if you spend a little bit of time thinking about how it could be. So like a crappy grass field is, you know, it makes training more difficult. That's going to make you better. Uh, you know, a, a coach uh, who maybe isn't the, the perfect coach for you, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe that, that can help you in some ways, you know, whether it's by just, you know, realizing what you need in a coach to look for in your next coach, um, or, you know, proving a coach like that wrong can, can feel pretty great and build a lot of confidence in you. I think a lot of players, um, and a lot of people in general, um, like to, you know, blame the situation that they're in. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying like, like, you know, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, lucky, uh, in, in my life. Um, and I know a lot of people aren't, um, but I still think that the tough situations are what make you, 
you know, who you are. And I talked about like testing your limits. You only do that in yeah. tough situations, right? Yeah. yeah, that's true. And if, I mean, if you, if you talking about control, like if you, if you blame the situation, the, situ- the situation is in control and not you. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I like that when you brought that up uh, earlier. All right. This has been episode 16 of the infinite improvement podcast. Um, yeah, we are on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon podcasts, Apple podcasts. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week. Next week's topic is going to be a soccer field that has a, a special place in your heart. Um, and why, oh, wow. um, so that'll be, that'll be an interesting one. Um, That's a good one. yeah. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Um, and we'll see you back here next week. Peace. Yes.